going to well let's going to start and what are we going to do today in the class well today we are going to make a listening then we will be practicing some exercises and um, about different grammatical things, but th they are going to be very easy and we're not going to take long, okay, in order to do them. And then we will see difficult vocabulary, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, difficult. Okay. Yes? All right. Okay, so what, let me, let me put the headphones. Okay, so what I am doing now, uh, I, I'm not sure if you can see my, well, it doesn't matter. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, we're going to make a listening. Let me think, let me think. So now you're supposed to be seeing my, um, my screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So we're going to listen to a listening. This is redundant about Computer Aid International. OK, the, it says this is like the summary of the passage. So it is the recorded passage is an appeal on behalf of Computer Aid International, a charity working uh, to bridge the digital divide between Europe and the developing countries. So this is a, a charity group. Uh, which um, gives for free uh, computers for developing countries. Okay, this is this is a three-minute listening, and it's it says as an example of this gap, you know, this gap in that in uh, developing countries they don't have computers and so on. We are informed that over two million walking computers are thrown away in Britain while. 90% of African children have not even seen one, okay? So this is a listening with a specific questions that I'm going to send you right now. So in the questions, um, there are seven, okay? It's not, there are not many. So in Britain, how many computers are thrown away every year? Well, I'm looking for a number. OK, then in number two, in developing countries, where are recycled computers needed most? Para qué se necesitan? Eh, why are they needed? For what? What do meteorological offices in Africa use computers for? What for? Para qué los utilizan? Why? Why do they use it? OK, so. Uh, more, more. Uh, how many computers has this charity shipped in seven years? How many computers are shipped, but in seven years? Okay, so well, we are looking ship. for a number also. What are 200 schools in Kenya waiting for? They are waiting for whatever. So what are they waiting for? ¿Qué es lo que están esperando? Number six. How much does it cost? How much? So I need a figure. Figure means, um, apart from figura, literally it means a cifra. Okay, so we need a figure in here. So how much does it cost to put a computer on a school oh, day? So I will need a figure. What's the meaning of ship? Um, enviado. ¿Cuántos? It was here. ¿Cuántos eh, ordenadores eh, este grupo caritativo eh, envió? ¿Vale? Ship también es navegar, ¿vale? De barco. Good. To donate by credit card, what phone number must you ring? What phone number? So, you have to listen uh, to the four uh, to the uh, phone number. Okay, I'm going to send you these questions. Let me see the questions. Mm -mm -mm, so that you can have them. And I'm going to send you now the listening. Mm -mm -mm. No, what is happening? Maybe I have to close it. Well, I don't know. 
No. Perfect. Okay, there you have it. And you can do it on your eyes. Esperanza is there. So uh, you can do it on your own. And now I'm going to send you the listening. You can listen to it twice. Okay, so I'm going to give you some minutes and you write through the WhatsApp with the WhatsApp. No, no, no. <laughs> the Skype. Um, if you have finished. Okay, so. I'm sending to you the listening. It is three minutes, so you can hear it twice. So six minutes and a little bit more for you to complete the questions. Okay, so I give you like 15 minutes. Well, 15 or 10. Well, let me know when you finish. Okay, so that's it, guys. I give you time to do, to do that. Okay. Perfect. Si tenéis dudas, decidme.
Okay, guys, so now I want to hear you or you can write in the chat. So these are, well, now I will, I will tell you the answers, but first I want to hear what you have written. So how many computers? Two million. Two million. Very good. Million. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. No ponemos ese, así que muy bien, Esperanza. Así, two million. Lo que dijimos en una clase. Very good. In developing countries, where are recycled computers needed most? In schools, hospitals, and teaching centers. Yes, it was training, training centers, but it is good. Very good. What do you have for three? Marta. Yes. Eh, one question. Eh, the second eh, sentence. Uy, ahora se os escucha fatal. I don't hear you. Second sentence. Eh, me, me estoy escuchando también repetido. Eh, chicos, los que no estáis hablando ahora, eh, apagad el micro. Eh, okay, eh, Now yes. Ahora sí. Now yes. yes. Eh, related with the second sentence. Eh, uh -huh. I, I heard uh, a school, hospital, and training center or something like that. But at the end of this sentence, uh, she said that was for the poor areas, not for developing countries. Don't you? Creo que no lo he entendido bien. Okay, developing countries sí. son los que llamamos nosotros eh, países en desarrollo. Entonces, eh, son pobres. This is the ah, synonym. Ah, This ah, is the vale, same. Vale. Okay. Vale, vale. Vale, pensaba que eran desarrollados, no, es los que están... No, en... no, no, en desarrollo, exactly. Ah, en desarrollo, ok, ok. Very good. Everything clear. Ok, yeah. perfect. Uh, what do you have for three? Let's do it like that, I have here the answer. Ah. So, oh, no, I was making you a spoiler. So, two million in schools, hospital and training centers. And what do you have for three? What do meteorological offices in, Afri in Africa use computers uh, for? Mm, to give information for farmer and fishermen. Very good, because, because they can see the climate. This was the key. If you... Very good. Give climate information. Very good. If you have this, this is the most important because of the climate and so on. Very good. Uh, let's see. How many computers has this charity shipped? How many? More than 60,000. More than 60,000, Jose, in seven years, ¿vale? En siete años. Dicen muchas, muchas, eh, muchos números, but you have to take this into account very good. This sentence was, uh, was no order, ordering, order, order, yes. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. because, exactly. Yes, because the number four is, eh, está, lo hablan al principio, creo. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the sentence are, are no ordered. Mm. Ah, it's true. Yeah. In this case, in this case, mm -hmm. then we will see that they are ordered. Let's go to see what are the schools waiting for, guys? This is very simple. This is what we are talking about. All the time. So they're waiting for computers. Technical support, okay, okay, Esperanza, it, could, it, it is right. So for computers, more, well, technical support, they say it also, very good. For pupils, pupils is alumno, okay, like pupilo, but it is uh, like a student in English. How much does it cost, guys, to put a engineering... Uh, yes, well, for computers and, yeah, compu uh, technical support, engineering. And we're in six now. How much does it cost to put a computer on a school desk? Mm -mm, let's see. Yes, 49 pounds. Very good. 
Very good. And the last one, do you have the telephone number? It said O, 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 things like that. Ya vimos que O, cuando era cero, Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be able to... Eh... <risa> Habéis oído mucho for y mucho eight y mucho o. Recordamos eh, un día que o lo llevábamos al cero eh, cuando estábamos hablando de números de teléfono. O, eight, o, 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 four, four, o, four, four. Ok, so we don't say zero, eight, zero, zero. Well, you would be understood. So, very good, guys. You have done very, very well. Very well. In real life conversations, eh, esto, es lo, bueno, esto podría salir en un listening, pero no tendría sentido porque en la vida real, pues si no nos hemos enterado del número, nos puede pasar en nuestro propio idioma y decimos, eh, could you repeat, please? Y que nos lo digan más lento. So, no tiene sentido. But we have to practice a little bit the listening. Uh, and that's it. Very good. Uh, now, what we're going to do is that we're going to work a little bit on grammar about what we, you told me the other day about the ing or the infinitive. Um, uh, what shall we do? Uh, let's go into this one. Hacemos este ya. What do you prefer, this or this and this? First option is only this and second option is only this. What do you prefer, guys? Son de todos de lo mismo, de lo del infinitivo o el gerundio. Part A or B and C. Lo que queráis. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. And for you guys? Second option. I think the second option is like more mm, dynamic, right? Second option. So let's going to start with this part B. Remember that after when we want to put verbs, two verbs together, okay, we have to unite them by putting the preposition to, okay, uh, with some exceptions. So normally 99% of the times when we want to put two verbs together, We're going to use to, like I want to go. Aquí pongo un verbo, aquí pongo otro, los tengo que unir por to. En el 90% de los casos. Bueno, cada vez digo un porcentaje porque me lo estoy inventando. No, ahora lo digo en serio. Esto es la mayoría de las veces. Cuando no se pone to y cuando no se pone nada, por ejemplo, en los verbos modales, I can go, aquí no pongo nada, un, un auxiliar en este caso, verbo modal significa... Ya lo habré dicho en clase, pero bueno, I repeat. Que tiene, es auxiliar, ¿vale? Porque no necesito otro auxiliar, no necesito el do, el have, el be. Y tiene ya valor semántico el verbo por él mismo, ¿vale? El can ya eh, significa eh, habilidad, permiso, ¿vale? Por eso es modal, porque es auxiliar y también... Eh, tiene significado, ¿vale? Cuando nosotros decimos I have gone, el have no tiene, no tiene sentido, es como el he hecho en español, el he está ahí porque sí. Ok, so, mm, most of the times we're going to find two, other times maybe in modal verbs we're not going to find anything, and in another little percentage we're going to find that The second verb is followed by an ing form. Okay, so you should have a list from the beginning of the course. Well, not the beginning because we saw this twice. Vimos esto ya dos veces. So let's going to practice this. Eh, ¿Qué tenéis que hacer entonces en el ejercicio? Pues poner el infinitivo, es decir, poner to go o going según el verbo que venga. A ver si os acordáis de que si lleva ING o no. Son unos más o menos 15. A ver, digo algunos. Eh, que me acuerde yo ahora mismo. Eh, love, like, hate. Eh, 
no, no, eh, Jose, you don't have the list because we saw it, we saw it in class in the beginning of the course and another time in, in January, I think. But we are going to, I'm going to tell you more or less, roughly. Eh, roughly is aproximadamente, okay? You're welcome. So, uh, like, dislike, love, hate, um, these things, these things, agree, uh, enjoy, finish, uh, imagine, put off, postpone, fancy, suggest, uh, avoid. The, I decided to take... No, no, not decide uh, what else. Well, these things, I don't remember more, but roughly, <laughs> roughly they are like 15, 20, something like that. Okay, so for example, now when you see this, um, ah, and another thing, you know that if you have a preposition, the verb is going to be with the ing form. You know that. If you have a preposition or an adverb of a phrasal verb. So if you have put off, which is an, a phrasal verb, you know that this is going to be followed by an ing form. Okay, so let's, let's try to do it. So I'm going to make this bigger and then I will give you time to do the other.
Okay, guys. Let's going to correct it. If you want, if you want, I can do it myself so that you can be writing down instead of you writing in the chat. Well, I don't mind. I'm going to be reading. James Forsyth has decided decide to abandon his second attempt. Attempt es un intento, ¿vale? Attempt. Como nombre, intento. Y I'm going to attempt, también es un verbo, intentar, ¿vale? Es como try, pero es más formal. Let me see. Ok. So, to abandon his second attempt at swimming. Why? Because I have here a preposition. At swimming the English channel after breaking, because after is a preposition, his uncle in a cycling accident. His decision to, post, to postpone, eh, su decisión de posponer, ahí tenemos que unirlo con el to. Uh, this attempt came after a two-week holiday, mountain biking. Mountain biking is that he was doing an activity. Uh, uh, and this took, a, a pro this was a process, okay? This took some time. So, mountain biking in Mallorca. You see how uh, Mallorca is written in English with his wife. His first attempt was also unsuccessful and he's unlikely, unlikely es poco probable, unlikely to be back, be back, regresar, okay? Training for a quite a few months. He said in a recent interview that he had not yet decided whether to try, whether, sabemos que es como if, okay? Whether to try, si intentar, entonces, si digo sí y luego intentar, eso lo tengo que poner en infinitivo. Whether to try one more time, but denies, deny era uno de los verbos que, a los que le seguía un gerundio. Denies losing total interest in the project. I aim to raise, to, sorry, to raise money for a local charity. He explained, he continued by saying, because this is a preposition, that if he could manage to find the time, he would do a lot more charity work. Dudas. Eight. Eh, Esperanza, deny, después de deny, va ing, ¿vale? Es un verbo que va así porque sí. Okay. Es como suggest, como finish, imagine, todos estos. ¿Les sigue ING? Pues porque sí, por eso mmm, hay que aprendérselo de memoria. O sea, lo podríais, esto lo podríais aprender con el uso, pero como no vais a estar eh, escuchando inglés todos los días, a todas horas, pues es mejor mmm, que, os lo diga, que os lo diga yo. Bueno, yo o cualquiera. Let's going to do the same but with this exercise. Y ya, ay no, me pasé. Okay, so, now, now I want you to do this exercise, which is the same, guys, infinitive or ing. This is the same. And then difficult vocabulary.
Okay, guys, let's going to see this exercise and we are going to move on to another thing. So number one, it's no use, it's no use crying over spilled milk. Uh, I thought uh, you wrote uh, a split, a split, uh, uh, dividir, and a spilled uh, uh, comes from spill, a spill, a spilled, a spilled, so it is the past participle of the verb spill, derramar, and this, a part that you have to use crying, uh, maintaining, uh, the Y, okay, you add ing. This is an expression uh, which means that uh, it's pointless to regret what is done. So, a lo hecho pecho. It's no use crying over spilled milk. All of this, esto, todo esto es un idiom y se significa eh, a lo hecho pecho. Okay, that it is not. It, it is nothing to, to regret what uh, someone or something has been or has done because you cannot change it. Okay, so you will understand this in Spanish. Very good. Uh, yes? Question. Uh, in the rest of cases, uh, after to use, we have to put a uh, to. to uh, it, exactly, but in here, this is an expression, okay? So expression is an exception, okay. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, uh, good point, uh, Javi. So, always when you, we have use, we have to, okay? But in, in, in expressions, well, you know that there are irregularities, okay? So, this is an exception. Very good, very good point. Number two, this examination is not worth, uh, well, in this case, uh, you can say worrying, but you could say to worry because it depends. Uh, it depends on American or British English, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, worth worrying if you put ing is American. If you put to worry, is British, but well, both of them are correct. Uh, some verbs, so some verbs admit both forms, okay? Uh, number three, after registering for the course, please come and see me, so because we have a preposition. I am pleased, estoy satisfecho, satisfecha, to announce the new president of our company. Okay, to announce. Please to. Uh, I would like to remind you to bring, remind, recordar, okay? to bring some information about our new product. Uh, I would, uh, well, in this case, we have an exception also in number six. I would rather, rather, salió en un ejercicio del otro día y era, eh, antes de un adjetivo, significa bastante, ¿vale? Rather eh, beautiful. Pues ahí digo, bastante guapa. No, pero rather también funciona como verbo y ahí no se pone nada, ¿vale? Es como si fuera un verbo modal en ese caso, no ponemos nada, aunque no es un verbo modal, pero para que me entendáis. Entonces diríamos, I would rather die, sin nada, sin ni tú ni... Lo que pasa es que aquí nos han, me, nos han mentido en el, en, el, en el statement, no me sale, en el enunciado del, del ejercicio. Bueno, infinitivo, chicos, es cuando... Vamos a ver... Por eso hay una diferencia entre infinitivo sin tú e infinitivo con tú. Entonces no nos han mentido, ¿vale? Ambos son infinitivos, solo que a este se llama bear. Bear en inglés significa desnudo. Pues bear infinitive, sin el tú. Y este es full infinitive, completo. Ok, vale, pero en este caso es die. Pero bueno, es otra excepción. Number seven. He didn't set out to be malicious, so he didn't mean to be malicious, no pretendía. Eight, it never occurred to her eh, to bring something with her. Nine, I don't have anything 
to do but study for my exams. And the last one, as soon as, tan pronto como, he had finished changing, finish, we have ing, the baby's nappy, nappy es un pañal. Uh, we went to visit my mother. Okay. Questions? No. A ver, si decís una. Eh, si decís el contrario, se entiende igual, ¿eh? O sea, si, si por ejemplo aquí es to be, pero decimos being, se entiende, pero suena mal, ¿vale? En algunos casos sí que cambia el significado, como en stop eh, o remember, remember doing o remember, de eso ya hablaremos otro día. Hay verbos en los que sí que cambia el, el significado, que pueden ir con ambos, ¿vale? Con el infinitivo o con el gerundio, pero sí que cambia el significado. Por ejemplo, remember doing... Es, ¿Recuerdas haber hecho, vale? Esto para hablar del pasado. Y remember to do es para hablar del futuro. Recuerda hacer... Eh, future. Recuerda hacer no sé qué. Ok. Entonces, bueno, hay algunos que los podemos poner con ambos, pero cambiaría el significado. Y esos son remember, stop, no hay muchos. Marta, eh, yes. one question to clarify. Yes. Uh, so always uh, after to good rather, we have uh -huh. to do uh, an infinitive without to. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Let o, me see. O no siempre, la mayoría de los casos. O... Uh, it depends. I would rather, uh, let me see because it is here. Would rather. I'd rather go. Let me uh, check. No. Eh, it depends. It depends. depends. No. Uh -huh. If, vale. Eh, ya te lo digo. Si, si, si significa, si es un sinónimo, el rather I, tú ves que significa preferir, uh -huh. ahí pones to. Ok. Por ejemplo, I prefer to play pues es como prefiero, ¿no? Ah, claro, I prefer porque es prefer, vale. Pero si yo digo, I'd rather to... Eh, ahí pondrías un to. Lo que pasa es que el rather, mira, también se puede poner con el past simple. Pero cuando va solo, bear infinitive without to, yes. Vale, entonces, ¿como regla general? Sí, vamos a decir que without to, sí. Ok, ok. okay. Eso okay. es la, justo la parte que nos saltamos un... Bueno, me la salté yo. Ok. Let's go to see difficult vocabulary. Eh, vale, quería ver eh, vocabulario difícil con vosotros, pero difícil en el sentido que lo podáis, que lo vayáis a usar y os lo vayáis a encontrar. O sea, no vamos a ver aquí difícil de que no os lo vais a encontrar nunca. Ok, so, we're going to see ways of looking. Ways of looking, maneras de ver, ¿vale? Pues, eh, a ver... Os cuento, en español tenemos ver, mirar, pero luego también tenemos contemplar, mirar fijamente, mirar boquiabierto, echar un vistazo, ojear, eh, yo qué sé, eh, ver... Bueno, eh, hay cosas que en español no diferenciamos, por ejemplo, ver por primera vez, decimos ver y ya está, en inglés sí. Mirar con disimulo, nosotros en español decimos todo el rato el mismo verbo, pero vamos añadiendo cosas, mirar... Eh, con lujuria, mirar con disimulo, mirar muy cerca, ¿vale? Pero en inglés no, son verbos diferentes. Ok, so we are going to see this. I want to make it beautiful eh, to motivate myself when writing. Ok, so eh, I'm going to make it bigger. I hope you see it. So we have look and you know how to use it and all these things. This is give attention to what one is saying. So you pay attention. ¿Ok? Look is... Mm, look to this. Mira. ¿Ok? Ok. So, normally you put look at something. Look at that cute baby. Look at. 
si digo look, pues digo look, no me hace falta decir más, pero si digo ya el algo, digo look at. Watch, eh, you know that, eh, is look at some activity with the eyes fixed. Ok, por eso antes se decía watch te television, pero ahora se dice see television, que no me gusta, pero I, I don't know. So, uh, you see, or I see, is when you say, ah, entiendo, I see, well, see es mirar, also. Estos son los típicos, ¿no?, que utilizamos siempre, pero hay otros. Y ya os digo que watch era, antes significaba, bueno, significa... To look at something with the eyes fixed. Pero ahora, por ejemplo, para hablar de veo una serie, I watch a TV series, pero ahora en los libros de Cambridge dice I see TV. Entonces ya, esto es bueno. Estos lo sabéis usar con, con el uso, ¿vale? Um, ok, now we have gaze. Gaze. No sé si terminaremos hoy esto, pero bueno, si no lo terminamos, seguimos el, seguimos el próximo día y, y ya también veremos eh, diferentes verbos de otras cosas. Gaze is to look at something for a long time in surprise or admiration. We say this in Spanish, contemplar, ¿ok? Contemplar o mirar fijamente. So, for example, those are, guys, regular verbs, regular, ¿ok? So... She gazed at, ¿vale? Siempre con los verbos de ver vamos a poner la preposición at. She gazed at him in disbelief when he told her the news, ¿ok? Contemplar. I don't know. ¿Cuándo lo vais a utilizar esto? Pues cuando utilicéis contemplar en español. Ok. Verbos regulares. Gaze, gazed, gazed. With D in the past, eh, simple, and D in the past. Participle. Very good. Es, then we have a stare. A stare is to look at something for a long time with the eyes wide open. Eyes wide open. Con los ojos súper abiertos. Esto es quedarse mirando. Veis que son muy, son muy parecidos, pero bueno, yo os doy y os aprendéis los que, los que queráis. Quedarse mirando. Ok, so... Uh, she was staring uh, to, you can say, at or to, uh, to that girl. ¿Ok? No tiene ninguna connotación, es quedarse mirando, ¿vale? Ni lujuriosamente, ni con disimulo, ni nada. Para eso habrá otros verbos. Then we have gok. Pay attention to the pronunciation is gok. Like gok. Me he pasado de dos. Como si fuera así, ¿vale? Gok, como si fuera una o larga. Gok. This is a stare. This is a stare impolitely. Es mirar boquiabierto cuando te quedas mirando como un tonto embobado. Okay. To gok. Mm. We have a uh, gop. We have gape, we have other verbs for mirar boquiabierto, but this is the most common. Gok. ¿Qué más? Tenemos glance. A ver, que lo quiero poner en capital letters. Glance. Eh, glance is to have a quick look at something. When you are in a magazine, for example, and you are looking for... Uh, looking, sorry, looking, looking at clothes, but you are not paying too much attention. To, so this is uh, echar un vista. Okay, so she glanced at uh, that beautiful watch. Se echó un vistazo a ese reloj, por ejemplo, en un escaparate. I don't know. Then we have glare. Si me paso de verbos me lo decís. Eh, estoy, estoy diciendo los que son súper esenciales. Eh. Glare. Glare means to stare. To stare angrily. 
¿ok? Mirar con furia. Mirar con furia o decimos también fulminar con la mirada, ¿no? Entonces, fulminar con la mirada, esta expresión sería glare. She didn't answer, but just glare silently at me. ¿Veis? Pongo at. Yo me los aprendería, eh, os estoy dando, os lo estoy intentando explicar en inglés, pero bueno, por si acaso lo pongo en español. Ya sabéis, es cualquier ejemplo, van con at y eh, son regulares, ya está, no hay que saberse más. Mirar con furia, let's see, let's see more. Eh, let me think. A spot. This is a spot means also place. Ok, un spot, bueno, un spot publicitario, pero spot también es un lugar, ¿vale? What is your favorite spot eh, in, in the beach? Well, my favorite is, the spot is, I don't know, whatever. The, the beach of uh, Cádiz, I don't know. Estoy diciendo I don't know todo el rato. A spot. Uh, is to recognize someone, okay, among many others. So it's like localizar, eh, detectar a alguien, vale, eh, divisar. I, I would say divisar, vale. Cuando reconocéis a alguien en un grupo, ah, mira, por ahí viene no sé quién, pues eso es spot. Si lo pongo en past simple, I would say spot it with double T. Then we have view. View is this put a polite for, for referring to a place. No, it's not polite. No. No. Okay, yes, ask me questions, please. Pues no, no es no. Ni estos verbos son formales, eh. O sea, estos verbos son como look. Esto se utiliza tanto como look. ¿Cuánto? ¿Vosotros utilizáis quedarse mirando en español? Pues me, me, me imagino que sí. Mirar con furia a lo mejor no tanto, pero ay, me fulminó con, con la mirada o me echó una mirada... Matar con la mirada, I don't know. Se me olvida el español por momentos. View. View, this is technical, this is look thoroughly. Thoroughly is with, with a lot of care. Regard, consider. Esto es ver. En el sentido de considerar. Cuando decimos from my point of view. Ok. So, the many people view, for example, many people view tattoos negatively. ¿Vale? La gente ve a los tatuajes de, de una forma negativa. Es en el sentido de considerar. Eh, sight. Sight means see for the first time. Ver por primera vez. So, for example, after waiting for an hour, the tourists were delighted to sight dolphins. Imagine you are uh, on a boat in, in the sea and then you sight uh, dolphins or whatever. ¿Los veis por primera vez en, en persona? I don't know, ver por primera vez. The men in the ship finally sighted land. Eh, los hombres del barco finalmente vieron tierra en el sentido de por primera vez. No sé si eso tiene otro nombre en español, creo que sí, pero... A, a, well, no lo voy a decir porque a lo mejor me invento una palabra y esto queda grabado. Jeje. Oh, by the way, am I... Yes. Me he asustado a ver si estaba grabando. Yes. Eh, ok. Then we have, for example, eh, one thing that we do with our eyes, that it is eh, shut and open the eyes quickly, and this is blink. Blink means parpadear. Ok, that we do unconsciously. For example, have you played this when you were young, like telling your friend, how long can you stare without blinking? How long can you stare mm -hmm, without blinking? 
Esto de quien parpadea primero pierde. I don't know. So, blink, parpadear. I think this is going to be useful. También se dice twink. Pero no os quiero liar. Yeah, and then, this is interesting for whatever, for romantic purposes and not for romantic purposes, for everything. Well, this is to close one eye briefly as a signal, as a signal of love, for example, or of another thing to somebody. And this is guiñar, okay? Guiñar es para muchas cosas. So, wink, wink, guiñar. Uh, what else? What else? Mm, we have. Es que no me quiero pasar de verbos. Uh, we have browse. Uh, for example, you have the browser. This is a browser. Okay, el Google uh, Chrome is a browser in which you look for things. So um, browse means to look through the pages of a book or magazine, okay? Well, to look at the goods in a shop. Goods is bienes, okay? Uh, in a shop without really wanting to buy anything. You don't want to buy, but you still look for things. And this is echar un vistazo again. Echar un vistazo means ojear sin H. Ojear con H en español. Eh, ahora soy profe de español. No, es broma. Eh, ojear con H es pasar hojas, ¿vale? Para que se os quede. Yo me lo, me lo aprendí así, ¿vale? Ojear con H, pasar hojas y ojear sin H, browse. Y ojear, ya sabíamos que era... Eh, mm, 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 ¿Lo tenemos por aquí o no? Echar un vistazo, es como glance. Lo mismo un poco. Pero quedaos con lo de browser, no sé si os suena lo de... Esto es un browser. Que sale, sale en inglés, si lo tenéis en inglés. Uh, frown, let's see frown, frown suena muy español, <risa> afruncir, a mí me suena, afruncir el ceño. Fijaos a alguien que tenga como lengua materna el inglés, frown y luego fruncir el ceño, parece un trabalenguas, es más difícil esto. So, uh, sabéis lo que es fruncir el ceño. He read the telegram frowning at its contents. Pues... No tengo que explicar lo que es esto, ya lo sabéis. Um, scrutin well, we have scrutinize. Scrutinize es escudriñar. This is examine closely, but we are not going to see that. Uh, we are going to see how many, two more. Let's say, let's see two more. Uh, peep. Peep es mirar con disimulo. Ah, no, pero se supone que, vale. Es que soy muy lista y os lo estoy diciendo primero en español. Vale. This is to look quickly and cautiously. With caution. With caution. Ok. Uh, for example, he was caught. He was caught. Le pillaron. Peeping through the keyhole. Ok. Peep hole. Peep hole. Hole así. Es mirilla. En inglés, ¿vale? Entonces, cuando abrís la mirilla, pues, yo qué sé. Mirar con disimulo. I don't know. Estoy intentando que se os queden estos verbos. Peep. Yo qué sé. He was caught peeping through the keyhole. Mirar con disimulo. Pues cuando miras a una chica, yo qué sé. Es que ya sabéis Esto, como ya lo sabéis en español, no os tengo que decir lo que es. And let's see the last two. The last two. And I promise. Uh, we have glimpse. A lo mejor algunos de estos os suenan. Os aseguro que si os leéis muchas veces esto, eh, bueno, os los podéis aprender. Pero si no, por lo menos, cuando los leáis muchas veces, vais a saber que es algo de ver, por lo menos. Entonces ya os podréis hacer una idea ya según el contexto. 
Glimpse. Glimpse is, I'm going to say it in English first, is have a passing view of something or someone usually used in expression to catch a glimpse of. Um, this means that we have this verb, okay, also in the expression catch a glimpse, glimpse of. This is the verb, uh, sorry, this is the verb, yes, and this is the same, but this is an expression. Lo podéis encontrar así o así. Glimpse, yes. And this means to have a passing view, and it is entrever. Os cuento esto porque si yo os digo, ¿qué significa glimpse, profe? Pues significa have a passing view. Pues os quedáis igual. Y si os digo un ejemplo, he could catch a glimpse of the president, pues os quedáis igual. Because you have to understand it in Spanish. En, en este caso me gusta traducirlo. And the last one. Peer. Peer. Look very carefully. As if not able to see well. Mirar, mirar de cerca. O mirar como cuando cerramos los ojos para ver algo en la pizarra que hay escrito, que está lejos, así. Es, es, eso es pie. ¿Vale? Yo, el truco que tengo para aprenderme que pie es mirar de cerca, pie también es un colega. Entonces me imagino, ah, pues los colegas están cerca. Pues mirar de cerca. Bueno, luego también tenemos observe, pero eso ya no cuenta. Eh, ya lo sabemos. Eh, es como estos. Look, watch, see, observe. Estos son iguales. Luego hay más, pero I think that with this you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. 15 new verbs. Doubts, guys. Dudas. ¿Habéis entendido todo? Yes. Porque os lo he puesto en español. Es que no tiene sentido que me enrolle a deciros una definición. Ok, perfecto. Si, si con deciroslo en español y deciros que son verbos regulares y que se usan, todos se usan, ¿vale? Mira el boquillo abierto, echar un vistazo, es que lo vais a usar. Eh, Esto está muy bien para de cara a exámenes y bueno, de cara a aprender inglés en general. Ok, ok, guys, so if you don't have doubts, I will see you on Wednesday with more things, with more, what, we are, what we have been doing today, Ex a little bit of exercises, and then we can, mm, lo que queráis, el miércoles os pregunto a ver si os sabéis esto, eh, podemos, os puedo preguntar, eh, os preguntaré también lo que hicimos la semana pasada, os diré cómo era largo, cómo era alargar, cómo era endulzar, eso lo, os lo preguntaré, me lo voy a preguntar, preguntar, para que así lo llevéis un poco al día y si veo que os sabéis bien las cosas podemos introducir más vocabulario y si no, pues a lo mejor es mucho, ¿vale? Ok, why I'm, I speak in Spanish. Ok, guys, so thank you for being here and see you eh, on Wednesday. Have fun um, and study a little bit the verbs. Ok. okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Thank bye. you, guys. See you. See you. Bye bye.